Well, Africa is still battling to find lasting solutions to one of the continent's killer diseases, malaria. Following a recent malaria conference in Lusaka and Zambia, the focus is now shifting from research to delivery of new drugs. Most of these drugs are in the last stages of clinical trials. And one of the organizations in the delivery of anti-malarial drugs is Medicines for Malaria Venture. And to tell us a little bit more about the meeting in Zambia, we're now joined by Dr. Chris Hemshaw, who's President and Chief Executive Officer for Medicines for Malaria Venture. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on the program and welcome to you. Good morning, Peter. Tell us a little bit about uh, what went on at the conference in Zambia and uh, some of the outcomes. Well, I think one of the main things that went on was exactly what you were saying in your introduction, that we were trying to move the agenda on R&D, which is what we've been mainly doing with uh, pharmaceutical industry to thinking about what happens when we actually have the new drugs and you have to do a lot of preparation actually about two years worth of planning before you introduce a new drug. So what are the challenges typically then that one faces in t before a new drug actually ends up in the hands of uh, uh, patients? What are those steps? Well, uh, I mean for one thing mm. you need to get the policy aligned to the drug and historically because there haven't been very many drugs it's been something that was relatively easy to do if you have no choice your policy follows the the very limited number of effective drugs now with a lot of new drugs coming online i think the policy people in every country have to start thinking you know what's going to be the first line drug what's going to be the backup are we going to have multiple drugs are we going to have different drugs for different groups, are we going to have pediatric drugs, that sort of thing. And uh, at this conference, what was decided then? I mean, how, how can you approach this? Well, I think what was decided is that we need to have a sort of increased capacity by all the players. We need to have increased capacity in the national malaria programs in the countries so that they can get ready for the introduction of new mm. drugs. And I think we as global organizations have to increase our capacity also to help actually deliver the drugs because uh, it's one thing to develop them, it's one thing to have the policy, but to actually get them in people's hands, particularly in the rural areas, is still a big challenge. Mm. Uh, talking about policies, uh, 53 countries on the continent, does that mean there's 53 sets of uh, control boards, medicine control boards that you have to approach uh, before you can get a, a universal uh, uh, delivery of the drug across the continent? Well, the problem is, is really sort of in, in the sub-Saharan mm. Africa North Africa and even South Africa doesn't have that much of a problem, KwaZulu Natal and North. So you're really talking about that belt mm. above South Africa right up to the Sahara. And yes, because there are so many countries and so many different uh, formal organizations you have to deal with, that's one of the reasons why it's a, it's a very complex issue, one of the reasons why you need a lot of time. These drugs, are they ready or are we planning for drugs that might be ready? Well, actually, I mean, there is a pioneer drug called Coartem, which is already ready, is already being used. And there are some new formulations of that pioneer drug. And then every two or three years, we expect some new ones to come online. Now, that might not seem like a dramatic increase but that's from a base of sort of nothing happening for 10 years at all. So that mm. is quite a big increase. We've been struggling to find uh, real solutions to the continent. It's been killing so many people. This new batch of drugs uh, that are coming through, um, can we be sufficiently excited that we're really making major breakthroughs in terms of the fight against malaria? Well, uh, having effective drugs, affordable effective mm. drugs, is a key part of the whole program. It's not the only thing. You have to prevent malaria as well mm. as treat it. But I think the one thing that has been shown absolutely compellingly is that when you introduce affordable effective drugs into national programs, you have a very major effect. And trying to get that major effect from just a small area to throughout sub-Saharan Africa, that's still a huge challenge. Mm. And I think uh, you know, ask me the question in a few years' time and I'll <laughs> tell you whether we've succeeded. All right, so the concern at the moment is uh, making sure that we can deliver these drugs. Uh, capacity, we've talked about. On, the, on the, the received cells, what can they do for you to better prepare themselves? 
Well, I think for one thing, uh, it, it's great to have people who are flexible and, and, and willing to think about the introduction of, of innovation. Uh, as I said, that mm. hasn't historically been the case. So historically, what's tended to happen is that there's been advice from, from the World Health Organization, a policy was set in place, and that, that policy would be set in place for possibly decades. Now, we have to have a, a, a much faster system of bringing in new policies and bringing in choice. See, there really, apart from the private market, there really hasn't been choice mm. so far. At this conference, then, did you have uh, people who are able to influence policy present to hear some of these concerns? Well, we certainly had, I mean, as you mentioned, mm. the, the meeting was in Zambia. We certainly had representation from all of the departments in Zambia. Uh, but Zambia is one country. We need contact with many other countries as well. Is this a problem uh, peculiar to Africa or other countries uh, across the developing nations where malaria uh, occurs? Is that also a problem in terms of uh, the delivery aspects of uh, getting drugs to people? Well, it, it is a problem in, in Southeast Asia to some extent, but, but actually Southeast Asia has, is, I would say, several years advanced of Africa. So even though they have quite a big problem, they have worked out how they deliver medicines uh, and, and actually they're having great success. So Africa mm. remains the, the sort of mm. final area where one's really trying to make progress with malaria. And mm. some people think that about 90% of the global total is in Africa, in Sub-Saharan Africa. All right, and final words, what needs to happen as a matter of urgency for you? Well, I mean, I think we need all the help we can. I mean, it's in everybody's interest to, to make this. Uh, the World Economic Forum meeting, which is a meeting in Cape Town soon, will have malaria and the interaction between malaria and, and big business as part of what they're doing. This is not something where one organization is going to do it all. Everybody has to help. Thank you very much for joining us on the program and uh, sharing your thoughts and ideas with you. And uh, I think uh, Africa's waiting uh, for any breakthroughs that you can make. And let's hope that we can deliver these uh, drugs on time as well in the process. Thank you so well, much thank for you, joining Peter. us on the program. And communications is part of the, uh, the issue agenda as well. So, so we must assist you as much as we can. Yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you so much.